Hello everybody, we are live! After a little a summer break in our live webinars, we are back because it's already September. Kun, it's almost Christmas. It's almost New Year. But before... But almost Christmas? Are you crazy? It's not almost Christmas. <laughs> So Kun is gonna try to turn it off. I have to do the filter thing right now. So if you guys still hear the uh, little intro music, please let us know. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so if you have trouble hearing me a little bit, turn up your volume if you can. You can hear me better then. So let's uh, move on. So as I said before, we start with our holiday craziness uh, with Christmas. We're going to do some Halloween because it's scary season first. I personally love a scary season. I love the October, the, the autumn. Uh, it's, it's so nice and cozy. So let's start. I have a very a fun uh, bouquet for you guys uh, today. I already created the base. I will give you the sizes, of course. Don't worry. Um, the structure, how it's made, as you can see, it's a square stacked column um, laying flat on the floor. Um, so it's pretty basic technique. I skipped this part so I can have more time to show you other designs to dress this base up. At the bottom, I have two water weights at two places. So that's heavy enough to keep you centered down. Um, the big cluster I used, I used five in total, are inflated. It's a 12 inch balloon inflated around 10 inch. And the inside balloon, so the um, clusters, the smaller clusters for the square stack column are inflated around four inch. Then I closed uh, the base with a tapered shape on both sides. For this, I used a 10-inch balloon inflated around 5, 5.5 inch. And the last is a cluster of 5. I will show you. It's all black, it's more difficult to see. 
So we close the base with a 10 inch cluster, 5, 5 and a half inch, and then a cluster of 5 with the last balloon in the middle, and it's inflated uh, around 3 and a half inch. Um, and this is the base. So five big clusters, then four smaller clusters on the inside. No. Okay. Koen, our technical guy is still uh, with... Yeah, but they don't hear me. So we have a little technical trouble because people don't hear me, so I can... Yeah, we try to switch microphones then. Because if people can hear me, the live is webinar is pretty useless. I can do the little dance. So we're going to fix the microphone. So technical issues... So let's check again. I have a new microphone, as you can see, and I would love to know if you can hear me right now. Do you guys hear me? Then I will continue. Of course, I will repeat all what I've said, um, if the sound is correct right now. So thumbs up in the comments if you can hear me, and I will restart this uh, webinar Yes? Kun, can you check the comments for me? Yeah. If people can hear me. Some people didn't hear me, some people did. Um, I assume we can continue right now. Um, I'm totally lost now. <laughs> So we're gonna restart then, so I guess. I think. Am I, can, can people hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Yes. So uh, after this break, uh, I think we can continue. Maybe we can do it all over again. Just, Just to be sure, I will uh, redo the whole so first part. It's a quick part. Yeah, everyone is, uh, is able to listen to you, so now we're uh, good to go. Perfect. It's the first time after holiday. We just came back from Colombia, um, so m we have a little bit startup issues right now. St still a little bit jet lag. Let's say it's uh, we blame the jet lag. Okay. So as I said before, the base of uh, the bouquet we are going to create is a very basic construction. It's the square stacked column. I'm going to give you the sizes. The biggest size you can see here are five clusters in total, 12 inch uh, black, inflated around 10 inch. Then we have four smaller clusters um, in the middle of those bigger ones. Those are 5 inch black balloons inflated around uh, 4 inch. Then I ended the base with a, a tapered shape. The first is a cluster, I will show you right here. A cluster 10 inch balloon inflated around five, uh, five and a half inch. And the last is a cluster of five, four balloons flat and one in the middle. And those are inflated three and a half inch. And in the bottom, to keep it uh, down and it stays nice and flat for the weight, to keep up your full bouquet, I added two water weights. So this is the base and 
Now let's add some details on the base. First, on both ends, I add a cluster of four silver, reflex silver, inflated five inch. And what I always do when I inflate my balloons, always give them a little push. So the balloons are nice and round and not the very oval shape. Uh, it's just a preference, it's not something you need to do. It's just, I like the look uh, of the design better. I will connect it to the base by using one of the nozzles. So I pull out a nozzle of the smaller cluster in the base. And I will use this nozzle to connect my silver cluster and I just wrap it around and tie it off and I do the same on the other side and now I will have a nice and flat connection point for other balloons so I always like to add the cluster of 5 inch so you have a clear connection point for other balloons the first balloon uh, I'm going to add in this design is a 36 inch pumpkin print. As you can see it's uh, under inflated because we will add a little bit of greenery on the top. Take the nozzle and I tie the pumpkin 36 inch in here. If you have trouble tying in the 36 inch because the neck of this balloon is of course much thicker, you could use a modeling balloon, a 260 or 360 to make it more easy. And that's it, now it's in place. Of course it looks a little bit boring, so I'm going to make a raisin twist on the top and I will add some green, so reflex uh, gr lime green on the top. I'm going to create a, a nut, so just a couple of nuts in a 260 orange, like so, and cut this off, and with this I will make a raisin twist. Um, Koen, any questions so far in the comments? If you have any questions uh, during the creation of this bouquet, just ask them in the comments. Kun is behind the computer and he will uh, do his best. Yes, but uh, so far no questions, so uh, I think it's all clear for now. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So I have the little raisin and I add it on the top. And, and then you shoot it away and you make a new one. <laughs> oh Kun, it's, be it's underneath your chair. Say what? It's underneath your chair. Why did you aim for me? Well, I think we all know why I aim for you. What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Catch! Thank you. Ha! I have my raisin back. Because I let it go. What I'm going to do, because I make the raisin from the outside, because it's a 36 inch, what I notice a lot of the times is if I, if I put in the little nut before I inflate... I have a question. The 36 inch, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why the, don't you do the nozzle uh, in advance? Pre That's what I'm explaining right now. Okay, sorry for my interruption. I'm used to it. So, why I don't put in the raisin before is because the latex is very thick and I underinflate the 36 inch. Um, it's very difficult to find the raisin. Of course, you can... Um, tie in the raisin before you inflate the balloon uh, you just have to stretch it a lot so there are a lot of different oh, not a lot there are, I know three different ways to create a raisin just pick whatever you prefer I already showed once how I created a raisin in the 36 inch I believe it's the communion one the communion live webinar there I first tie the raisin then I inflate the balloon you just have to stretch it a lot because the latex has to be uh, stretched as much as possible before you tie it off. Um, so there are just different ways. Before I showed you the one I tied uh, first and then I inflate the balloon, 
Now I first inflate the balloon and I make the raisin from the outside. Um, I push in the raisin. So actually the movement I will make with my finger is I will push it down and then I hook it underneath to grab it. I find it very uh, easy. Hmm? Um, no, we already have an instruction video of how to do it uh, exactly. Um, I make sure I have my 260 with me. So I push in the raisin, I grab it and I twist the balloon and then I tie it off. So it's a pretty simple and fast movement. Make sure when you tie off the raisin, tie it nice and tight. So wrap it around a couple of times. Keep that pressure and tie your knot. And now I have my connection point at the top of the pumpkin. So as you can see, it's pretty simple and fast. Choose what you prefer most. Which one? To do it before or after. It's really, it doesn't matter that much. It's whatever you prefer. For the greenery, I inflated a 260 reflex lime green. Tied into a circle. And then I twist it in the center. And the next one, I with the end, so I inflate it, I leave about four or five fingers at the end. And first, I will create a loop about the same size. Twist it, tie it off and twist everything together. Now this is going to be my top part. Of course I'm going to trim off the ends at the top. So make a knot and cut off the rest. And I love to make a little shock twist for some movement. Like so. Now we have a little pumpkin head. I use the two sixties of the raisin I have at the top to tie it in place. And I can trim off the ends with my scissor. Like so. Fast and simple, and just a little bit extra uh, for this balloon. Looks just a little nicer. Then for the second one, I'm going to add a second cluster. Um, it's inflated, it's around a three and a half inch. And again, I use the nozzle of the cluster before to tie everything in place. Like so. So this stack is a little bit higher because the next element is uh, it's about this big, just a little bit smaller, tapered shape. Um, I like the look of the, the, the tapered uh, shape. And just a little bit high difference is always good for me. Now next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little witch with this foil balloon. And what I'm going to do underneath, I'm going to make a small body. And as you can see, it's all air filled. It's a little bit uh, tricky to make it upstanding. So we're not going to make the body too big. It's just going to be a small body that's going to stand over here. So it's going to have a really cartoony look. Uh, everything clear so far? No questions or comments? Well, no questions. Uh, we have some comments. Uh, good day from Dubai. Ooh, Dubai. Uh, Hello. Good day from Australia. From uh, Sean, natuurlijk. Hey Sean, <laughs> it's always great to see everybody all around the world watching the webinars. Uh, Marie-Pierre, 
It's simple, but uh, gives a plus. Thanks for the idea. You're welcome. Thank you. Kun, por favor. Por favor, Kun. That was uh, good. He didn't turn off his phone, so for the people who didn't know what happened, his phone went off. First lesson, when you're in a class, turn off the phone. And a hi from London. Hello, London. London calling. Wow. Okay, let's go to the top view, Kun. We have the top view. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to create the body of the lovely witch. It's going to be a very simple design. It's going to be a flat weave. And it's going to be a little dress. Going to start with inflating to 260s black. Now the most important thing that the first part of the dress is going to be nice and small. Going to start with two small pinch twists. So this is about the size. Don't make the pin. I see a lot of people making the pinch twist very uh, long, very big. Always keep in mind that the length of the bubble should not be wider than the uh, thickness of the balloon. If that makes sense for you. So if you make a pinch twist, keep this in mind. So I'm going to size the first part of the dress. And it's going to be around this size. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So, so this is the first part. We have two equal bubbles and two pinch twists. Make two bubbles to go down. And the next bubble is going to be slightly larger. Like so. And we're going to do a roll through to lock it in place. So, Denise, can you say something in French for all the French people? We have Marie Pierre Champagne and Bonjour. Celine Rinkel. Just bonjour. Bonjour, uh, Lavash Kiri. <laughs> Is that your best friend? That's my best uh, croissant. <laughs> so that was uh, the French speaking part. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really not not good with French. I think it's one of the most difficult languages. I know I, I was on holiday this year in France and I learned... Uh, C'était délicieux. So, even if I... doesn't matter if I go to a restaurant, that's what I say. If I like it or not. C'était délicieux. So, we're going to repeat this uh, process. About four, five rows. Don't make it too wide because you are going to create some spacing. And it's just going to be a really short body, so it's not going to be um, in balance with the head, but it's like the cartoony, cartoony uh, idea of the little dress. I think we should add one more layer. Like so. Yes, so this is about it. So we're going to have like a triangle shape uh, for the body. I'm going to end the design with pinch twists. So everything stays in a place. I'm going to cut off the ends. Let's 
So after a little summer break, we are uh, back with the live webinars. But of course, besides the live webinars, we also have our group workshops that are uh, back. And we have a couple of fun group workshops coming up. Uh, because I'm not going to teach them. We have all special guests. The rest of the year, we have special guests for our group workshops. And... The first one is going to be Melissa Vinson, all the way from America. She's coming to Sempatex Europe and she is going to show us her foil magic. She has a lot of amazing designs with foil balloons and how to create beautiful uh, creations like the, the, the Macron cookies cakes. Is that correct, Macron? Right? Yeah. No. So... Uh, we have a lot of fun stuff on the schedule. So this is the first, it's a dress. Um, I'm going to add some simple uh, legs underneath. And of course we have to attach uh, the body, the head and the legs all together. Now this is an important step because it's all air filled of course. Um, it's very easy for the head to fall backwards um, or to the front. Um, there's a little trick for this and I will uh, show you in a minute. First I'm going to grab the legs. Um, you can keep the top view cool. Um The legs are going to be in pastel green so they match with the, uh, the head of the witch. So give me one second. I will grab my 260 pastel mat green as you can see and it's important to make the legs not too long because then your design will not have the stability to stand up straight this is going to be around the size so for me it's like a little bit longer than my head oh well it's from the beginning to the end of my hand. Tied it together. Like so. So very simple as you can see. 260 tied together. And it's going to be in here. And we're going to use some pressure to get it in. Let's get this to the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the 260 to the head of the witch the head, not the head the head I roll it and tie it off and this I'm going to get through the dress The first part is a little difficult because of the pressure um, you have. Like so. Now the only thing you have to make sure, because now the 260 is not stretched 100%, um, the head will not be stable. So I'm really going to push this in here and the tension on the 260 is 100%. You want to keep that pressure and we're going to tie the legs to it. Like so, I'm going to make a knot on the inside so it's all connected together and it can go undone. So that's about it. And now we have the base of the body. We're going to make two little arms. Um, let's create them right away. It's more easy with the top view. So we have the little uh, body of the witch. And we're going to create two small arms. Also trying to keep it as basic as possible, uh, not uh, too, too many difficult twists. The only difficult part here is we're going to make a tulip twist. 
uh, not this one. We're gonna make a tulip twist for the arms with the 260 and the bubble gum to bubble gum to match the head, of course, the skin color. So first we're gonna make short sleeves for the dress. Now important is to keep a longer nozzle for the arm for in the pink in the bubblegum pink balloon and we're gonna tie this the end of the nozzle to the 260 black as you can see now there's here is some spacing and you're gonna need this space for the tulip twist you're going to make with the black and twist it off so this is going to be a little sleeve for the dress and I'm gonna make a pinch twist like this and cut off the rest and tie a knot so it won't be undone so this is the first arm and I'm gonna recreate it, I can use the same black 260 and just copy paste what we did before just get make sure you have a long 260 so you have the spacing in between the two balloons This is the only part that's a little bit tricky for some people if you don't have a lot of experience with the uh, tulip twist. Uh, it it's can be a little bit tricky. A trick to make it a little bit more easier, it sounds a little bit disgusting, but make your finger wet so it slides out easier. So if you have trouble with the longer tulip twist, then try to uh, make your finger wet. It sounds strange, but it, it can help. I'm going to twist the two pinch twists together. Of course, use water, nothing else. Yes. <laughs> of course. So I'm going to use the pinch twist that's at the top of the dress with the pinch twist that is uh, at the end of the sleeve. And I will twist those together to lock them in place. We have one of your friends from uh, Colombia, Marcela Arias. Hello, hello. Hola. Hola. Happy you are here. Yeah, I, I just came back from Colombia, as maybe some of you knew. Um, I've been to the amazing convention by Sempertex, and it has been awesome. I had such a great time. I've learned many new people, and it was really nice to, to be there at the convention uh, in Colombia. So thank you again for the invitation, Sempertex Colombia. So now our little witch is in a hugging position and uh, we will just give a little shock twist in the arm and then I will twist three bubbles and I'm just going to make a simple hand for the witch like so a fourth small bubble and cut off the rest and of course tie it off to lock this in place just to be sure it won't get undone roll the last bubble through the three bubbles together and now it's locked in place and I'm gonna copy paste the same thing on the other side three bubbles, twist them together and a smaller bubble get rid of the end, tie it off and roll it through to lock it in place of course clean the ends
and then we have two little arms. Okay, let's go. So we have the little witch. You can see the head still could use some stability. You can balance it out. A little trick that will help is sticking the ends of the uh, foil balloon to the body. We're going to do it later. It just creates extra stability uh, for this design. Fun thing, it can be done completely air filled. And as you can see the head now it just flips forward and back. Uh, but I'm going to fix that in a minute. First I'm going to tie in the little feet. And we have special guest Tony Twist from the UK is here. Ah, hello Toby. And uh, Ceci from uh, Peru. Tony. Hello. So, it's so many people. International. So international today. Happy about it. Hmm? Gilles. Gilles. Hello Gilles. Good to see you. Gilles is also one of our uh, guests that's coming this year to teach. He is uh, going to be after Melissa. He's going to come in October. And he's going to do an organized organic workshop. So, um, back to this workshop. What is organized organic? Organized organic, it's a way to create organic structures and framing, um, but with knowing how many balloons you inflate and what sizes, etc. So, it's a way to organize. create organic decorations yeah. in an organized way, which is very important for your business. Uh, because how can you price your decorations if you do not know how many balloons go in there? Um, so I'm going to tape the ends of the hair of the witch to the body uh, just to make sure it's going to be locked in place. For this I'm going to use some balloon bond. So I'm going to use two pieces of balloon bond to help make the witch stay in place. What also helps is make sure your foil balloon is in the body so you can use pressure of the balloons to make sure it stays in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is in place and I'm going to squeak the foil balloon a little bit more in here just to make sure it stays upright. And there you go. I'm going to add more, um, as I always say, when you build on your design and you keep pushing and pulling, the balance can uh, get a little bit different. Um, but we're going to finish this design off with some nice gowls, some little ghosts. Um, I created a couple of them already. Um, and I'm going to show you, of course, how to create the little ghosts. And Denise is back here. Oh, no, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> so... The little ghost we are going to create to finish uh, this design. And I'm just going to add them around the design just to have a nice, fun, uh, playful design. Of course, these little ghosts are fun to add to a lot of your other Halloween theme decorations, which can be an organic garland. Um, you can make them all uh, pop out of your... Uh, designs. So whatever you create, if it's an arch, a column, a bouquet, or just some random ghosts in your store where they pop out of the shelves, you can go as crazy uh, as you want. I think they're really fun to uh, play with uh, the design. Also, the balloons are double-sided, so you always have a little ghost uh, wherever you're going. Um, so let's just add them. Um, tie them into the design 
and I have little pinch twists on the end of the curly to 60s so I make, can make let them go uh, wherever I want to let's see what's nice for the camera and we can play with this design um, I also have the little uh, black ones those are the Sempertex ghost printed uh, balloons also this one is double sided I'm not gonna add as many uh, black because the complete base is already black um, but I think it's fun to add like around here just to create some height also It's really goofy uh, looking design. Let's face it a little bit to the front. And they are just gonna move uh, around this whole uh, design. Let me show you how to create this fun design. Um, I think it's easy also to go up there, right Kun? Um, you're gonna need a link balloon, white. One of the printed balloons and a 260 white. So this is what we are going to need. And I will start with the bottom part. Just add a little bit of air in the white link balloon. And now I'm gonna squeeze the air to the tip. And you have to do this in stages, so don't try to, in, in one push, get all the air to the tip. I tried it for you and then it's very likely for the link loon to pop. So just go step by step, push the air. So the latex is going to be stretched and it's more easy for the air to flow through there. And then you're going to tie it off. So just a little bit of air, it's inflated max I think around four inch and then you're gonna push the air to the tip of the link loon um, you're not gonna need to squeeze it all the way to the end because we're gonna use this as tying points attachment points to the curly to 60s and then tie it off of course the late you're in the middle of the link loon so the latex is gonna be much thicker than normal but this is the, what it should look like. So this is the bottom. Then we are going to inflate the, ha uh, the head. It's a 12 inch uh, printed balloon. But of course you can under inflate it when you completely stretch the latex. You're going to see the print uh, very nice and clear and tie these two together you could even do different sizes bigger and smaller ones like so and with the white 260 we are going to create the little arms this is also going to be the stability a point for the uh, head and the body no questions Kun? perfect little shock twist because it's always nice to have some movement uh, in your design and two small bubbles that will uh, become pinch twists so twist them together and roll around the 260 and now we have two pinch twists a small bubble which is going to be the neck and again two small bubbles twist them together and roll the 260 through same size bubble don't forget this part very important wrap it around the head and the body the tying so the tying points and connect the 260 cut off the end but keep the 
260 tie it again and we're gonna connect it to the other side for the second arm so we have this part cut off the ends and of course we're gonna trim off all the nozzles to have a clean finish and that's it three balloons link alone the round printed goes this of course is my favorite side I love this little guy and also you can create some shapes in that link alone to have the little uh, little ghost so this is it gonna create add a uh, 260 curly I will also show you this for the ones that don't know 260s make a little pistol shape okay say or, or a dog it's it's a dog oh, can't say pis pistol anymore <laughs> and pinch the end the tip of the 260 in between his fingers wrap it around don't wrap it around too tight because then the air will not be able to go through the balloon and make sure uh, the balloon is not overlapping or twisted like this so it's nice and flat okay. gonna hold your hand steady on one point and uh, inflate the balloon that's about it I'm gonna tie the two balloons together and I will make three pinch twists in total the reason I use three pinch twists is because it just gives that extra stability to make the little ghost stand up uh, better so like so yes and now I can add it into the design where I want it so let's add this one here you can add them uh, wherever you want lost one pinch I think they are very cute and very fun to put around I have some more I'm going to add them but I almost got one extra um, finishing touch for this design in the front what you will need is the letter B. I always just check how to hold it for camera. I'm terrible with this. And an 8 sideways. And then it spells boo. And we are going to add some eyes into the 8 uh, to have an extra playful uh, effect. So we're gonna take our 8. It's a 14 inch uh, foil and I'm gonna make two duplets with the eye printed 5 inch balloons these little fellas and two silver 5 inch let's put this on the side so inflate make sure that eyeball is stretched so it looks the print is showing well and on the other side is a little 5 inch silver and we're just gonna push that one through so the 5 inch silver in the back holds the eye up in the front so a second one I 
can push this one through and now we have really fun eyes. Oh, wrong, no. I'm terrible with the mirror image. And I'm going to add this into the front of the bouquet. For this I'm going to use some uh, balloon bond to add uh, connection points and I can tape it to the front of the design. Hmm? Yeah. I also have to see where the... So we have the two gluing points in here and on this side. Yes. Make sure and put them in place. Like so. Now get this one straightened up straight. Okay, fix her later. I have to put the head when your little witch keeps falling down, it means the head is not in tight enough just gonna apply the pressure that will hold her up like so so this is the uh, one in the front um, I really like the eye uh, detail at the bottom if you want an extra scary eye with some uh, red sharpie you can create like the veins in the eye and it just gets a little bit more uh, scarier if you want to um, of course I think a nice it's a nice effect uh, let's finish the design off with the little uh, ghosts let's add some little some extra little ghosts into the design and then we're all uh, done for today hmm? yes sir Kun, any questions so far? Uh, so far not, so I think for the first time you make uh, a really good uh, workshop. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think it's all clear. And again, joke's always on you, with this <laughs> these kind of comments. <laughs> yes, I know, but it's still fun to tease you. <laughs> I understand, I would do the same. Yeah, and if it, w if it would be nice to you, nobody would trust it. That's also <laughs> true. N neither do I. But uh, people like it. The old people say "boo" back to back at you. Oh, <laughs> you have, you have to do it with effect next time. Could you have to do a better job? You have to do the sound effects for them, like "boo," "boo back," "boo boo back at you." Or "boo." Yes. Little more excitement into the. More excitement. Yeah. Okay. And you, and you have to read the comments. I cannot see oh. them. Marcella says uh, "buenas técnicas." So that's. Uh, Spanish, I think. God of as uh, cuties. Top gemaakt, bedankt. Uh, Maya Thomas is such a sweet ghost. Cute, huh? I love the ghosts. Tony says, very nice. I like the ghosts as well, actually. They're really nice. Oh. Dirk, love it. Who hey, loves look, it? Look who's here. Jeroen van der Linde. Uh, hi, Jeroen. Hello, Luitjes, he says. That's Dutch for uh, hi, hi, people. I had to push but this uh, no questions, so it's all clear. Okay, perfect. Um, a little witch. So it's really about the head getting it in very uh, tight. Yes. Uh, she's a little bit tired, it looks like. Let's create another black one. And you can keep on building, of course. I just want second the black one at the top there's more playfulness in the throughout the design
I think the, the little ghosts are very well to add to your decorations. If you're going to use them, I would love to see pictures. So please don't forget to tag us or send them to us um, so we can see your creations. Because workshops are not only about learning new techniques, learning new designs. It's also all about inspiration, getting inspired, getting new ideas. Maybe you already knew some techniques. I'm sure you knew, knew a lot of the techniques I already showed you today. Uh, but it always makes sure you're inspired and keep on creating new uh, designs and new elements. Uh, let's put this one here. Um, like so. Sandra and Marjolein say hello. Hello. From the Great to hear from you. The balloon school. Nice to see you guys. Get the balance right. This last one, fix it in place. Because with designs like this, you can keep on playing all the time. And you can keep on building, keep on adding to make it as big and fancy as you would like. And then you get the final result. Since I have to relay all the messages. Yes, please. Tony Twist thinks it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. And if you know me really well, you know I love puns. I just love them. They make me so happy. So this is my design uh, for you today. Um, of course, we will take a, a nice a clean picture afterwards uh, that we will post online that you could use if you want to. Um, play around with this design. I hope you liked it. I hope it helped you to create some new Halloween decorations uh, for this year. Spooky season is on and I can't wait to see all what you are going to create. If there are any more questions, the moment is now to ask them in the chats. Um, I'm going to say one more time, we have a lot of fun workshops coming up with the first one. 25th of September, Melissa Vincent. Be there. Be there or be square. You can join. Uh, live here at Sampatex Europe, which is always the best, of course, but you can also join in via Zoom if you can't make it here. And it's about foil fusion, latex and foil balloons fused together into beautiful, stunning decorations or decor elements. Yes. So and if you're still here live with a real workshop, you also get a login to watch the, the workshop back. So if you forgot a little bit of the workshop, you yes. can still look, uh, yes, go online and see the workshop again. It's on Zoom, it's recorded and the recorded band can be watched and for another seven days uh, uh, online. Either if you're here or if you watch online. Yes. Sandra says, great design, Denise. Thank you. And she also hears a spooky breathing. Maybe she has... Oh, that's you. Or it's me. Whoa. Tony like just says, thank you for the awesome workshop. Thank you so much. And I hope you love my t-shirts. It's from Colombia with the little Chiva. If you ever go to Colombia, go to the Chiva. It's amazing. What's a Chiva? It's a party bus. What's a party bus? A bus where you party on. <laughs> oh, well, thank you the for the explanation. coffee, of course. <laughs> the, the best coffee in Colombia. Yes. The coffee plant. New t-shirt. I love it. So that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thanks, and everyone. I hope to see you next month. We have another live webinar. Uh, but of course, first, I would love to see you at Melissa's workshop 25th of September.